MLB The Show 23 is finally here. So this video, I'm just going to go over the settings that I would recommend that I personally use. In the top right of your screen, you have the settings. We're going to click on that. And then we're going to just go to the first settings options that you see here. And then gameplay is what we're focusing on today. The first area we see is this general area. Not really going to talk about it much. At the top, you'll notice that the gameplay style is automatically set to competitive in Diamond Dynasty and online play. That's what we have it on here. So this is more just personal preference on these areas and won't really impact your online play at all. So we're just going to kind of skip over that for this video. But it's mostly personal preference, a lot of stuff to kind of make the game flow better or help you learn the game with some tips. Now for the control area, we're pressing the right bumper going over to that. Offense is what we see first. And I'm just going to pretty much go setting by setting, starting with the base running interface. I always use analog select. That means I'll move the analog stick towards the base runner that I want to control. Once he's selected, then I'll press the button for the base that I want to send him to. Swing input, I personally use button. And then the type of swing that I use, almost exclusively normal. I hardly ever use contact swing or power swing. 95% of the time, if not more, I'm going to be using a normal swing. I think that would probably be X on PlayStation Hitting interface, you got zone and directional. I use zone hitting. This is what you're going to want to use to play the best you can play. You have something called a plate coverage indicator or PCI, which you move to try to hit the baseball. With directional hitting, it's really about timing, and you could swing and a miss, even with good timing, on a pitch down the middle. So I would highly recommend using zone hitting, directional camera shift, directional hitting indicator. Not a problem, not a thing you can change with zone hitting on. PCI anchor. I don't personally use this. You can turn it off if you want. I actually just have it on to the preset locations, but I don't even use it. Still got it on in case I ever decide I want to, but 99.99% of the time, I'm just leaving my PCI in the middle. I find that's easiest for me to just react that way. It's what I've always done. So I try to keep doing it. And then the plate coverage indicator, that's the PCI we're seeing here. You probably want this on. You don't have to have it on. You can have it be invisible and still move it, but I personally have it on. I like to be able to see it. My PCI center, you got some options to choose from. In the past, I've done diamond circles, usually not hardly ever altitude. But this year, I'm going to set it to the new bat PCI center. My inner, I'm going to set to none. And then my outer, I'm going to set to none. The plate coverage indicator, the PCI personal preference whatever you're most comfortable with i'm changing mine all the time if i'm in a little bit of a slump i find changing it sometimes helps me get out of that slump maybe it's a mind thing maybe it's not i prefer using the color yellow for mine again the pci a lot of this customization really is personal preference whatever works for you but i like using yellow it's what they've always had so i just kind of stuck with it and then i set my transparency to 100 with no fade outs guest pitch we're just going to leave off vibrations I'd usually turn mine off. Sometimes I'll leave it on, but a lot of times I just set this to off because I find it kind of throws me off sometimes, but it depends on the controller. That's another big thing. Now we're going over to the defense. Pitching interface, I would highly recommend pinpoint. This is going to be the most accurate pitching style. If y'all want, I can maybe do a pinpoint pitching tutorial, but you got others to choose from. But if you're good at it, which it's really, in my opinion, pretty easy to get down once you know what you're doing, I would recommend pinpoint the pitching ball marker. You have the chevron, which is some arrows that display the amount of break. And you can have that fade or just set to on. You could not even have a ball marker. Or you could have the pitch trail, which you can have that fade out or just always set to on. I prefer the pitch trail because this goes from the pitcher's release point to the final intended pitch location. I feel like this just shows what the pitch is going to do. And that's why I always prefer having pitch trail as my pitching ball marker. Can't do anything with the meter display on pinpoint pitching, that's for the meter setting. Throwing interface, I would highly recommend button accuracy, but it is harder this year. That's one thing to keep in mind, especially in online play. It's not just in the middle every time. Depending on the throw, it's gonna move around a little bit, be bigger or smaller, so it's gonna take some practice, but I'm always using button accuracy. You do have the chevrons. Um, I actually never really noticed that, but experience accuracy arrows under the player's feet when the input's provided. I'm not even sure if that shows with throwing interface. I think that's more for uh, more for the buttons or the analog, stuff like that. But who knows? Maybe it's on for button accuracy too. 
throat canceling i like to keep this on because i'm just always pressing the buttons i'm always messing up so i usually just keep that on catch position indicator some people like that line i prefer the drifting i prefer the drifting ball the track ball is this blue line on the field i never really got into that i've always just had mine set to the drifting ball which is a baseball icon that shows up on the field and i just run to that so i'm gonna keep mine on drifting ball that's what i like to use but they also have a way to turn it off or set it to that weird blue line thing i'm just gonna go ahead and do the drifting ball and then dive slash jump two button right here rb will trigger a jump and the right trigger will tr uh trigger a dive and that's what i prefer to use it's kind of nice knowing okay if i'm pressing the bumper he's going to be jumping if i'm pressing the trigger he's going to be diving that's just what i like to use and those are the defense settings player lock we're not going to really go over this. This is going to also be personal preference. If I was doing road to the show, I prefer using button accuracy. I a lot of times like using the fielder when I'm player locked because if I'm center fielder, I feel like Y is going to be my home, right? I feel like it wouldn't be the other way around. I feel like my brain thinks, okay, I'm in the view of the fielder. But again, this stuff's going to be personal preference. That's for road to the show player lock stuff. And those are all the control settings that we have. Next up is camera. And hitting view is a big one. And the biggest thing that I'll say about hitting view and why this is one of the most important settings in my opinion is it's about personal preference, but I do feel like you have the biggest advantage using one of these strike zone settings. These are going to be your most zoomed in. I use strike zone because that's the one I've always been using ever since MLB 15, the show 16, the show I've always been using strike zone as my hitting view. So I'm just used to it. But this is not a setting I would recommend changing too often. I feel like a big part of hitting in MLB The Show in real life, but in MLB The Show especially is repetition and seeing it from the same angle every time. So if you're always changing this, I feel like it's going to be hard to get better at hitting. So I would recommend finding one that you like and sticking with it. It doesn't matter 100% what you use, but... If you want to be the most competitive that you can be, play the best that you can, I would recommend using one of these strike zone options. I personally am using just strike zone, not two, not three, not high, just strike zone. And then pitching view. A lot of people like to use the same one that they hit with just so they're always seeing pitches coming in from the same camera angle, which I think is a good idea. I just prefer using the outfield pitching view. It's from behind the pitcher and it just looks a little bit more natural while pitching to me i feel like i struggle a bit when i use one of the more zoomed in or behind the hitter cameras so i use outfield and i would recommend trying it out but i just like seeing the view differently from what i'm hitting i like to change it up every half inning i feel like it gets kind of repetitive if i'm seeing the same one while pitching and hitting in play offense and defense medium is what i use and to me it looks the best i've tried using some of the other options that they have and nothing ever looks as good to me as medium. So that's what I use. I would just try it out if you haven't, see how you like it. But I just really like how the ball looks going into play while hitting and pitching using the medium in play views for offense and defense. And then we have display as the next setting tabs. Fielding aids, I don't really know if we're going to be focusing too much on this category. We can see right here a lot of these are locked right here. And a big part of this is like the pitch suggestion. You're not going to be seeing that in online play. Dynamic difficulty, that's not an online play. Now the in-game notifications, and that's not what you're seeing in the top right. That's going to be, I think, like the XP in the top left, maybe road to the show, attribute gain, stuff like that. So I'm just going to keep it on. Strike zone, I have it set to on. Hot zones off. Pinch information on. I'm really just keeping this most of this stuff where it's at. Pitch select displays on pitch descriptions. Confidence energy bars on. Pitch feedback on. Minimal for this. My swing feedback's on. I don't think this is in online. I'm going to set my off the wall ribbon to on just in case. But I feel like online games is not going to matter. The base running diamond, we'll keep that on. Same with the player name display and the score bar display. And then our game log order, we'll have that be in chronological order. And then that's going to be it for the gameplay settings. Real quick, I just want to go to presentation. These, again, a lot of this is personal preference, but I would recommend turning off the pitch selection cameras. These are going to be the ones where you're just playing and you see the cameras kind of from the side of the pitcher, the hitter. To me, they seem out of place, so I always set this to none. Again, a lot of this stuff really is personal preference. These are the settings I use, but 
I would recommend turning this to none in your presentation. That's a big one. If you want the games to go as fast as possible, you could turn things off like batter walk up. But in this area, I'm really only turning off the pitch selection cameras. I don't really like seeing those. We also have audio and video. I always turn my music volume off and a lot of times I'll turn my commentators off. I like to have the sound effects all the way up, but this kind of mix and match, see what you like, but I like to have the sound effects as loud as possible. And for me, the announcers usually end up getting turned off. We'll see how long I keep them on this year though. Inside the show, the narrator, stuff like this. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it where it's at. And then mode specific options. Not gonna touch on this in this video. This isn't really about franchise or anything like that. So those are our MLB The Show 23 settings. Any clarifications or questions, drop them in the comment section. Myself or somebody could try to help you out. I'm sure this video was at least a little bit confusing, but I hope it did help somebody out there. Hope y'all enjoy the videos. We stream on Twitch, Twin Gaming TV on there as well. So I hope to see you over there in another video. Thank you as always for watching. Hope you have a great day. Peace out.